Hi, I'm Phil. And hi, I'm Julie, and this is Let's Dive In. Yes, thanks to everybody who sent in lots of questions. There was loads of them. And we're going to try and answer a couple today, but don't worry, we'll try and get to some of the others in another episode further down the line. So our first question for today comes from Robin, and Robin's five. And Robin wanted to know, what is water made of? Now, I really like this question because it seems like it could have such a simple answer. What is something made of? But actually, there's so much more to it. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, we could be ready to uh, dive into the question. Yeah, yeah, we're going to dive in. Thank you, Phil. Thank and, you. And, and make a, uh, a splash with the, oh. uh, the water question. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can I, can I go now? Can I start? I mean, like, water are you waiting for? <laughs> oh, Bill, did you get it all out of your system yet? Oh, okay, fine. Look, it's totally flushed, flushed out of my system. <laughs> Just all, there'll be, there'll be bad jokes throughout all of our episodes. Just to assure you, mostly they'll come from me. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Phil. Okay, so now that we will get started, I want to talk about the building blocks of water, which relates to the building blocks of life. So everything on earth, everything in your room, everything outside in your garden, and everything in the whole universe is made up of building blocks called the elements. And the elements are organized in a table. So scientists have been doing research, discovering them over the years, and they've found them and they've organized them uh, in a table. Yep, I've got a table. So I've got... Table. Not, not that kind of table. I was thinking more of this kind of table. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, it is. I've had this since I was five. Five. The same age as Robin, who asked this question. Can you believe that? Wow. So, yeah. old, old so it may not quite be up to date, but this is the periodic table of elements of the building blocks of life. Now, they're organized in rows and columns, and they relate to each other in different ways. But we're focused purely on two elements today, two building blocks. The first one is hydrogen, which is up here, yeah. and it's got the symbol H. And the other one is over here, and this is oxygen. So to make water, we need two bits of the hydrogen over here and one bit of oxygen. And now, Phil, I think I sent you a molecule in the post, a it molecule looked, of water. Yes, I didn't it? know what it was originally, but this arrived and I was delighted to get it because it looks kind of like a Mickey Mouse type thing. But yes, I have it. Yeah, it does. It's, it does look like Mickey Mouse, but actually that is what scientists think mo a molecule of water looks like. So in the middle, the bit you're holding, the red ball, that is the oxygen. So that is symbolizing the oxygen. And then the two little ears sticking out the side, those are the little white balls on the end that I'm doing my Mickey Mouse ears. Those are the hydrogen, hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the oxygen. And when they bond together and they come together, they make a water molecule. Now, in its natural state, uh, when it's uh, in, in, under standard conditions, scientists would say, which means room temperature, room pressure, so where you and I are now, yeah. water exists as a liquid. Right, so it's the stuff that you can drink. It comes out of the tap. There you go, exactly, exactly like that. I have a glass of water. Hi, right, cheers, Phil. Now, it can also exist in other forms. So, if we take one of those water molecules, for example, and we get loads more, and we pack them all together, squeeze them together nice and tight, put them in rows, put them in columns, make it nice and equal and even, then we get something called solid water. And another fancy name for that is ice i knew that one ice yeah ice the cold stuff you got in your freezer the cold stuff that makes your drinks nice and fresh and the stuff that makes your ice creams yummy so ice is just solid water now the other state that water can live in is a gas so the gas is called water vapor and this is when we get molecules of water like that that are zooming around the room really far apart and not really bonded to each other at all. <laughs> yes, quite, quite like that, exactly. And when those molecules of water are flying around the room, they're a gas, and that is called water vapor. Now, all of these things, this liquid water, this solid water, the ice, and the water vapor all exist on Earth, and they, co they form part of the water cycle. Can all of these things exist, obviously, at the same time around, like, everywhere? Like, just, you could... 
Yeah, they can, they can, but they, they don't exist all in the same place at the same time. Okay, so right. I couldn't have like ice and liquid water and water vapor on the same molecule, but in different places, they can exist in the same way. So, uh, Phil, you've got a lab behind you. Have you got a globe in your lab somewhere that we can have a look at? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. I, will be, I will be small and far away for a moment. Good time. Okay, thanks. All right, here he comes. Oh, look at that, look at that. It's perfect, look at that globe. Mm -hmm. Right, now, if you look at all the blue on that globe, right, that is the water that's on the surface. So just the seawater actually, but that's a really big chunk of water. And that seawater is liquid water. So in the seas and the oceans, water is a liquid. And in the rivers and the lakes, it's all a liquid. Now, Phil, can you tilt that globe and show us the oh. bottom of the globe? There you go. And there's a white bit there. Yeah, exactly that. Now that white section, that represents the ice cap. And that is where the ice is. So at the top and the bottom of our planet, there are two ice caps. And this is where we have solid ice. So we have the seawater, which is liquid, and solid ice, so solid water, existing at the same time on our planet. Now, we can also have the water vapor. So you think clouds in the sky, that's where your water vapor has gone up in through the sky into the clouds. And I've actually made a uh, little painting for you oh, of how the water I cycle works. Of you. I didn't know you were that good. That's nice. Oh, okay. you make that? Yeah, so like, yeah, watercolors or? Yeah, it's watercolors. It's watercolors and a sponge. So I get a load of water, splash it on. I use a straw to blow the water across my page as well. So like the wind blows the clouds and blows the water across the world, right? So well, let's start with that, okay? So we've got the wind blowing whew, clouds down and then they form clouds and then the clouds let the water out. So there's your water, your rain water coming down, okay? And then we've got water running off down into the sea here. So there's your, your liquid water, yeah? And then some of it will get really cold and it'll turn into ice. But then the sun will be beaming down and it'll evaporate all that water back up and it'll form clouds again and whoosh, the wind will blow it across and it'll come back down again. So it's like a cycle. So like a, like a bicycle that keeps going round and round and round. Like exactly, exactly. So all the water on our earth, except the stuff that's trapped underground because there's quite a lot of it trapped underground as well. In but a lot of it that's well, ground on water, the surface. Groundwater? Yeah, ground water exactly. Groundwater, there you go, you yeah, got it. You have it, of course. Sorry, you know these things. Me trying to, <laughs> no, sorry. So exactly. So it's, it's all trapped in this cycle. So that's pretty cool, I think, that all the water goes around and around. So if all of this water, just point of question. So mm. all this water is going all the way round and round and round. Does that mean that all of the water that ever was here is still here or are we running out? We are not running out. All the water that was ever here and ever will be is on our planet, somewhere on the planet, either as a solid, as a liquid, or as a gas. And I think that is so cool. It is really, really cool. That's pretty so cool. Even if you take that cup of water that you've got next to you, Phil, and you drink that, yep. it might look like it's gone, mm -hmm. but actually, it's not. It's in you. It's in there. And what will happen, right? The cool thing now. You've drunk it and it'll go down your digestive system and it'll come out the other end and it's still part of the cycle. So, so I drink it, it goes in me, it comes out of me, it goes in the toilet and goes red, sky, cloud. Does that, am I, drink, am I drinking my own or somebody else's pee? No, 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 no. Thank goodness, no, no, you're not drinking pee. So when it goes in the toilet, it all gets cleaned up and then the clean water comes back into the system. Oh, that, <laughs> that, that, could, have been, that could be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so have another sip, you'll be absolutely fine. So there we go, we've got our answer to Robin's question. You don't need to worry, you are not drinking pee. Water is not made of pee. It is made of hydrogen, two atoms of hydrogen, bonded to one atom of oxygen. And there you go. That is water. I mean, Julie, that was, I've been pretty impressed because we started with something little, tiny little question and we went all over the world, inside us, outside us, historically. I mean, we've dived in and I'm impressed. Well done, good job. <laughs> Grab a towel, dry off, <laughs> onto the next one. <laughs> 
so Phil, we've taken that question on. Now, what's the next question? What have you got for us? Ah, I've already jumped. I'm excited about this one because Emily sent in a question that pre piqued my interest. Uh, it was one that said, what is the most dangerous experiment? And Ooh, being a man of okay. danger. Yeah, I know. I can see your worry. Like immediately, I started thinking of like danger and heroics and uh, like sharks or uh, sea bass, angry sea bass with like lasers on their heads, or or you know that experiment where you get um, uh, hydrogen peroxide and you mix it potassium iodide and you mix them and you get this elephant's toothpaste. It goes yeah, exactly like that. Or 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 if we could do it, like there'd be like a giant explosion in the background, and we could like walk away from it slowly in slow motion but never look back because heroes never look back at explosions that's that's the thing they never do heroes these are heroes are cool we could do that we're cool. Yeah, we're cool well what about like big fire breathing machines i mean those are cool too uh yes fire breathing machines are definitely yes this is the kind of thing i'm thinking of exactly and it's it got me thinking about like how these experiments can be dangerous to the individual like the person how you might have to protect yourself from dangerous Ooh. experiments so if you i've got something for that Oh, Give me oh. a minute. Okay. While Julie goes off randomly, um, yeah, so per PPE is like personal protective equipment. You might have heard that recently. So it's about stuff that like you, what is she doing? What are you at? And then, sorry, uh, like it's so stuff like if you're doing something dangerous, you might wear the most appropriate equipment to, what? What are you doing? I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring it on. Anything dangerous you've got for me, Phil, I can handle it. Did you just have that, like, lying around the house? No, not really. I mean, it's safety equipment, right? It's not going to be lying around the house. Oh, I can't hear a thing. Oh, <laughs> this is my husband's safety equipment for yeah. when he's doing all his dangerous work with saws and chainsaws and, and all that sort of stuff. So it keeps him safe so he doesn't get any sawdust flying in his face or cut his hand. Perfect, exactly. Wearing the right equipment at the right time. And that's why or how an experiment can be the most dangerous if you're not wearing or using the right equipment. So yeah, sometimes people think that like scientists, all of us wear lab coats and we don't. Like sometimes chemists and biologists or even some physicists sometimes will wear lab coats, but only when it's appropriate or will wear goggles or will wear gloves at some stage. But most scientists don't. Now they wear what's or use either the right equipment or clothing or protective equipment at the right times. And that's really what you want to look at is protecting yourself. And protecting others is a little bit different because not everybody's going to have all of this protective equipment if they're not working in the space around you. So you need to look after others like before and after the experiment just to make sure that they're okay too. Wait, so like after the experiment when you haven't tidied up and someone trips over something? <laughs> yeah, and I don't know why you're asking me specifically that. I, yeah, okay, I, I'm messy sometimes, I admit. But yeah, cleaning up is, this, is the right kind of thing, but it's also others afterwards. Like as a scientist, you are trying to make things cheaper, faster, safer, cooler, color, whatever, more colorful. You're trying to do these things. And imagine if you did that without working scientifically, like you, you didn't follow the right kind of process. What, so like not recording all of the results? Bang on. So imagine like you didn't like write this stuff down because one of the most important things is like telling other people about it so that they can have a look at things or test it themselves or so other people can, who have different ideas can challenge you and make sure that it's right. Right, so you do the experiment more than once. Yes, so you do the experiment more than once, once, like so you'll do the experiment once, and just so in case it wasn't chance, you might repeat it again and again and again. And the more times you do that, the more likely your answer is to be right, or you get a better picture of it. And what's even cooler then is that if you do it in one place and then someone else in the world does it and gets the same answer, you're like, hey, we proved something together, because they're, they're doing what peer review, they're checking what somebody else did. Because... If you do something once and you don't do it a few times, you don't write down and you don't work scientifically and then you tell everybody about it and you're wrong, it's really hard to convince people of the other way once they've heard something first. Sometimes people hear something That's first. You, you remember this kind of thing happened? Yeah, yeah, there have been a couple of stories like that, haven't there? I mean, there's quite a few all the time, but was yeah. there one about spider? Oh, spider, yes, the spider one. This is, oh, it's weird. Okay, so you might have heard of the thing where, yeah, Every year, everybody is supposed to eat or swallow eight spiders in their sleep. Well, now I love spiders. Like they're, I don't like keep them or like there's Clive that lives in the living room, but he's, he's great. But at the same stage, I don't want to eat 
Clive or any other spiders. But this was a story that was made up by science communicators, by scientists, to prove how easily misinformation spreads around the internet. Now, lots of people think that this is the truth. And not only has it proved their experiment that like, by saying something false can spread really easy and now people believe it, it's hard for them to actually go, no, it was an experiment. And that's with something really simple, like a story about spiders. This kind of stuff can happen with like medicines and other things, which is crazy. Like, like, like the vaccine story. Oh God, the vaccine story. So like vaccines, the person who was doing it, really small sample size, didn't do proper work scientifically properly, fudged the results, all of these different things. And now in the world, there are people who don't think or think that vaccines are, are dangerous, are linked to other diseases when they're absolutely not. And even though there has been study after study after study after study with thousands, tens of thousands of tests and results, people still think that vaccines are dangerous and they're not. So this kind of thing is quite dangerous. You've gone from being dangerous to you to others, but others in a big way. So you have to work scientifically to get things right. Is there another way that we can be dangerous? I mean, there can be dangers in the laboratory still, but not outside. Well, there's lots of ways that I can be dangerous and heroic. Uh, but yes, there's also ways that... <laughs> yes, okay, you're wearing the goggles. You look cooler than me, fine. Uh, there is other ways, but this, like I said, when we were, I was diving into this and I was trying to think of different ways, I wasn't trying to just think of the one way. I was trying to think of, because it was dangerous to me, it's dangerous to others right there and then, it was dangerous to others maybe in the future, but then I started thinking, could we be dangerous to the experiment or the science itself? Oh, well, there are, there are, I think there are clean rooms as well, aren't there? Where you, you have to protect, you have to protect the work that you're doing from, you know, a cough or a sneeze or, you know, a germ on a finger or whatever. Maybe yeah? This is why you and me work together, Julie. You've got the same. I have exactly this kind of stuff. So you could be dangerous to the experiment itself or the stuff you've got. And I have, if, yeah, just give me like, so I have stuff that we can wear. So I have... I have some PPE equipment. It's kind of a bit different to yours, so I have to shoot. So, if we can be more protected, like biologically, to think. So sometimes you're trying to like not have germs go into your experiments, or if you're working in clean rooms where there's like stuff that's really, really sensitive, like on a micro scale, like you know all the computer stuff. You ever heard of a microchip, Judy? Ah, uh, yes, I have. So there's lots of companies that are like. Oh, that looks not heroic. When you're looking, like, making all of these kind of things, sometimes these processes are so small, there's billions and billions of transistors on, like, microchips or microprocessors that work in all of our, our stuff. Uh -huh. Oh, look, they're here. Um, and if a tiny little speck of dust gets on them, it can ruin the whole lot of them. And that's really, really dangerous because, you know, you lose lots of money, but it also can be dangerous to the experiment of the product that you're making. Um, but, you know, they donated lots of their PPE equipment to all other people. Um, but I just think that it's mad that these places where they're mic making microchips, I kind of, I think, oh, oh shoes, don't choose, one second. Okay. So, shoes too, because feet. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, places where they make these microchips are actually cleaner than operating theaters where they do surgery on people. So if you're doing surgery on people, you can imagine how clean it is. Yet, where they're making microprocessors. Uh, yeah. There. Simple. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> dangerous to experiment as well. Oh my goodness. So cool. So we've gone from massive explosions that are dangerous to people to yeah. tiny little bacteria and sneezes and, and us that can be dangerous to the experiments. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually, I could have thought about this too because I, I rushed through that and now I'm pretty warm because of all the... Yeah, I bet. And I'm, I'm getting... Can you do the... Did you say the... Yeah, I'll, I'll do the questions. Got it. Right. So that was a question from Emily and we've had our question from Roman as well. Thank you both so much for sending those in. If you do have any other questions, please do send them in. We are happy to answer them and we will dive right in. Oh, and don't forget, we've got our podcast and we will hope that will launch very, very soon. Yes. Okay, well, relax now. <laughs> Take okay. it off. Bye. Have some water. <laughs> Bye. Well, well, well.